Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. Today we're going to palpate for follicles, hoping for ovulations, which will mean gravid females that will be laying a clutch, hopefully not going to stocia, where we'll have to aspirate the eggs. Hey, you guys getting confused? These are all terms that we use all the time. We're going to take the time to explain some of them to you. You're watching Snake Bites. When breeding snakes, we use a lot of terms that people aren't familiar with that are just commonplace around here. I'm going to run down a few of those terms, starting with this term, palpate. It's basically when you take a female, and what I do is I put her in a cage and let her crawl through my fingers, and while I'm doing that, I'm feeling for little bumps, and those bumps are actually follicles, which are going to eventually develop into an ovulation and become eggs. Let me show you what a follicle looks like on an ultrasound. As you can see in the middle of the screen, the round circles are basically follicles. Now these guys are pretty advanced, probably about 25 millimeters. She'll ovulate within about 10 to 15 millimeters, roughly about 40 to 45 millimeters. Once a ball python reaches about 45 millimeters in follicles, they'll go through what's called an ovulation. And what you'll see here is a classic ovulation where right in this area, it really starts to swell up. That's when the eggs actually drop down and become calcified and fertilized and are actually now eggs and no longer follicles. After ovulation, we use a term that's called gravid, which is basically just a fancy word for pregnant, which means the animal is ready to have eggs. As you can see with the cinnamon pastel, you can see how stretched out she is and how round she is. She's ready to have eggs within the next week or so, so I'm going to leave her alone, let her get back to nesting, and I bet you I have a clutch of eggs from her within the next seven to ten days. After ovulation and the animal actually becoming gravid, they go through what we call a pre-lay shed. That just basically marks a date that we know that they're going to lay. In ball pythons and in most pythons, they'll shed and approximately 30 days later they'll lay eggs. With colubrids, it's only 7 to 10 days. The next two terms I'm going to talk about are the next chain of events when you're breeding snakes, and that's basically ova positioning, which just means the snake is ready to lay a clutch. And you guys probably already know what a clutch is, but basically it's just a bunch of eggs just like these guys. Here's Kel's question of the week. I really want to know why yawns are contagious. Why, why is that? I mean. You yawn, then I feel like I need to yawn, or even talking about yawning makes me want to yawn. I mean, what is the deal? Text your video comment below. Give me some kind of logical explanation for this. Alright, I'm going to talk about a couple terms that I hope you guys never have to worry about if you're breeding snakes. And the first one is dystocia, which basically just means egg bound. That means an animal has retained part of the clutch. As you can see with this albino corn snake, she's skinny in the middle and then she gets fat right down by the end. It's not because she's gravid, she's actually already laid a half a clutch of eggs and has actually retained the other half. There's a few reasons why this can happen. It might be a twisted oviduct, a tore oviduct, or even a folded oviduct. Overduct. None of those things are really good, but sometimes you can do what they call aspirate, which is basically just massage the egg down the oviduct, and hopefully if you can get it close enough to the anal vent, you can sometimes actually massage the egg right out, but you want to be really careful with that. There's also another technique that's called needle aspiration, which is meaning that you go right through the side and suck the albumin out, hopefully taking that pressure off the egg, and then the eggs will come out, but I don't suggest you doing this unless you're a vet or someone that's really experienced because you can harm some of those internal organs. And then lastly, if your animal is dissociated and none of that stuff works, there's nothing you can do other than surgery. Of course, after the egg laying, the next step is incubation and then the animals actually hatch. The term we use when a baby is actually just cutting out of the egg is actually called pipping. And that's basically when they use the egg tooth to tear the egg and start to get their head out, just like you see this animal here. One of the things I mentioned a little bit ago was the albumin, and you can see a little bit of that leaking out. That's basically just the egg whites inside of an egg. Another thing about albumin, for whatever reason, these little fruit flies love to actually do them. I think they're called flesh-eating flies. It doesn't hurt the snakes whatsoever, but when you're hatching this many snakes, they're around and they're a real pain in the butt, but they're not dangerous to the animals whatsoever. Another term that doesn't have anything to do with breeding, but we certainly hear it here an awful lot, is polymorphism. And Amazon tree boas are the perfect example of that. What basically polymorphism is, is just two different animals from the same clutch that look completely different. And this is an extreme case of polymorphism, but you see it in all animals, including ball pythons and everything. 
basically a ball python can have a banded pattern and a stripe pattern from the same clutch doesn't make them anything special it just makes them polymorphic the last term I want to share with you guys is something that's called sexual dimorphism and basically what that means is the male and females are completely different in some ways sometimes it's color and in this case with the hog nose it's actually size this is an adult male hog nose and they rarely get bigger than this and this is a sub adult female that will literally get up to twice the size so in hog nose you see a big sexual dimorphism between male and female sizes again in other animals it might be color or anything else like that so there are a handful of terms that we hear here a lot and when people come they sometimes ask us what it means I'm sure I've missed some and if you know them go ahead and comment down below I'd like to hear about them okay I asked for your stupid challenges and I got them and I deserve it but I'm gonna take this challenge of holding a retic with one hand and conquer it so you might as well keep sending them email type in your little stuff and keep them coming here it goes I'm all bungeed up as you can see there's no tricks it's a full stunt here we go First, I'll let the snake know I'm here. Ooh. Oh, okay. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. It's too heavy. <laughs> oh, this is really teaching the kids. <laughs> oh, yeah, this looks real safe. No, no. <laughs> <That's so cool. laughs> Are you done? What do you think? <laughs> oh god. Oh. oh. So does that mean I win the challenge? No. I guess in MMA terms you could say Chewy got tapped out by the retick. But challenge isn't over yet. Keep them coming and I'll keep them doing. But I want you to know one thing. I had Kel and Brian there at all times. I was never in danger. So don't try stupid stunts like that at your house with your friends because you're stupid. Just don't do it, okay? Thank you. Have a good day. On this week's Common of the Week on the Balls Deep episode, the question was, what new morph of ball python would you like to see? And S&J 912 said, I want to see a caramel chocolate. You could call it a Carmelo or something. LOL. It might be out there already, but I haven't seen it. No doubt that a chocolate and a caramel making a Carmelo ball python would be awesome. It happens to be one of my favorite candy bars. Now all we need is a chocolate and a peanut butter ball for a Reese's cup. You guys keep sending me creative comments. I'm going to feature you on a future episode. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show and got to know a little bit about the terms that we use on a daily basis here while we're breeding snakes. I want to take the time to thank each and every one of you guys for watching our show. Without your support, we wouldn't have anything and I can't thank you enough for it. You guys know that I'm a huge social network guy, so make sure to hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, wherever. I'm always happy to hear from you guys. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites.